Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on functions. In this video, we'll have six multiple choice test questions based on absolute functions. So we have combined absolute functions with the square root and reciprocal to understand how to find their domain. Question number one here is, domain of f of x equals to absolute value of x minus 1 divided by absolute value of x minus 2 is what? Now, you can actually pause the video, answer these questions, and then look into my suggestions. As you all know, let me sketch an absolute function here, so that's good for students who have forgotten about it. Absolute is a combination of two linear functions, y equals to x is the same line, but y equals to minus x is reflected. So it is kind of like this. You could always write absolute value of x as a combination of two piecewise functions. It is x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and it is negative of x when x is less than 0. Right. So that is how you could actually sketch a graph of absolute function. Perfect. Now let us answer these multiple choice questions. The very first one is domain of absolute value of x minus 1. The other one is absolute x minus 2 in the denominator. So denominator cannot be 0. So you can think about absolute x minus 2 should not be equal to 0. That is a restriction. Means absolute x is not equal to 2. And that means x is not equal to plus minus 2. Right? think like this, that we have uh, this value, right? So this is 2, right? So the two values which are not permitted are plus and minus 2, right? All other will be in the domain. And therefore, the option is option A. X belongs to real numbers where X is not equal to plus 2 or minus 2. Question number 2. Whenever you have square root, then the function inside the square root should always be greater than or equal to 0. So for here, the restriction will be absolute value of x squared minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0, right? It's in, it can be 0 also. Now this is for all real numbers, it is true. So option A is perfectly fine here. As you can see, whenever you do absolute of anything, you'll always get non-negative integer right question number three we need to find the domain of this function which is square root of absolute x minus one right so absolute x minus one basically means that we have translated the function absolute x one unit down right so that minus one basically translates the function one unit down right and therefore you can see that there is a restriction here. The function basically should be either less than minus 1 or greater than minus 1. It can also be plus and minus 1, correct? So that becomes the domain of your function, right? Or you could solve like an inequality saying that absolute x minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. And that means absolute value of x should be greater than or equal to 1 and that gives you the solution as shown here right so the absolute value of x greater than 1 means that either it could be greater than 1 or less than minus 1 greater than equal to right so option c is the right option question number four this time we have this absolute function in the denominator and within a square root right so in this case how should you solve it now clearly 1 minus absolute value of x should be greater than 0 right since it is within the square root it cannot be 0 also correct so so that really means that absolute value of x should be when i take it on this side so it should be you could write like this less than 1 correct so absolute value of x is less than 1 means x is between 1 and minus 1, correct? So that becomes your domain for the function, and the result is b this time, right? So that is the domain for the given function. 
सो आई होप यू आर विद मी नाउ वी आर एंटरिंग इन टू सम डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव हेयर इज वट इज द डोमेन ऑफ द फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन ओवर स्क्वेयर रूट ऑफ एक्स माइनस एब्सल्यूट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स राइट सो दिस टाइम वी हैव टू लुक इन टू एक्स माइनस एब्सल्यूट वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स एंड दैट शुड बी ग्रेटर देन जीरो Now you have to figure out what is the solution of this. You can always pause video and answer this question, right? Now, looking into this, you could do it in different ways. We want that to be either greater than it. It has to be greater than zero, right? So you could treat this as a piecewise function. So you can say, well, let's do it in two intervals. One, when the value of x is greater than or equal to 0 the other one when the value of x is less than 0 now if it is greater than equal to 0 in that case absolute value of x is equal to x and if it is less than 1 then absolute value of x is equals to minus x correct so we could actually write or rewrite this function as follows if it is less than 0 if x is less than 0 we can write this Less than zero means x is negative, right? Let's be, let's be very clear about it. We are saying when x is negative. In that case, we have this equation as x minus minus x, and this minus x will make it positive. That should be greater than zero, or we have x plus x greater than zero, or two x is greater than zero. Well. When x is negative, two x cannot be zero, right? So there is no solution here. Correct. Now, if you are looking into the interval when x is positive, in that case we have x minus x greater than zero, and here we get zero greater than zero, and that also means no solution. So the solution is a null set, which is option A, right? So at times we also write this as Phi a null set, or we can write this as null set. So this is a very important example where you see that the domain is a null set. The last question here is: Find the domain of this function three minus absolute value of x divided by five minus absolute value of x. So this one, I like you to pause the video and then answer this particular question. Here is how I will do it. So, as we saw, we have to look into different intervals whenever we are working with absolute functions. So, first step is find zeros. So, zeros of numerator and denominator. Correct. so we see that the zero will be at when absolute value of x is is 3 right so we thinking about absolute value okay so one zero is at 3 and the other zero is at 5 this is for absolute value of x is that clear to you divide the whole interval in three different parts right So we have here from minus infinity to three, and then we have from three to five, and we have from five to infinity, right? So let's try to analyze by checking some test points. Let's take a test point in the interval. So let the interval be minus four. For uh, let it be zero itself. We could take zero here. Uh, let's take interval which is four within this interval, a point six. So these are our test points. Now we have two different terms to analyze. What we basically need is the whole thing should be positive and greater than zero. Correct. So let us check what happens to three minus absolute value of x. So if I substitute zero here, then we get this as positive but if i substitute 4 here i get negative and if i substitute 6 here i get negative how about 5 minus absolute value of x 
if I substitute 0, we get positive. Here also we get positive. But if I substitute 6, we get negative. So that basically means that if I'm taking care of the ratio, which is 3 minus absolute value of x over 5 minus absolute value of x, in that case, within this interval, we get positive. Here we get negative, And then again, we get a positive value. Now, clearly, since in the denominator, we have absolute value of x here. And therefore, what we have here is that the uh, we know one restriction that absolute value of x is not equal to 5. That means x is not equal to plus minus 5. Right? That is very clear to us. Okay. Now, let's check the other values. So, for the other values, we have one solution here that the absolute value of x is between minus infinity to 3. That means absolute value of x is less than 3. That is one solution, right? So, from this interval, we get one solution, which is, let me write down here, which is absolute value of x is less than 3. Correct? So, less than 3 gives us the value of uh, x to be between 3 and minus 3. Correct? Now, if it is equal to 3, then we get 0 here, right? If I write 0, if I write 3 here, we get 0 divided by something. So, we get a 0. So, 3 actually should be included. So, in my solution, there's something wrong which I'm going to correct. Okay. So, that is one solution, a part of solution. The other part is this one, that the absolute value of x is greater than 5. So, when I say absolute value of x is greater than 5, that means that x is greater than 5 or x is less than minus 5. Correct? So, we get our solution here and the solution will be uh, b, but there is a change here. This should be included, right? Plus and minus 3 should be included, right? Because that gives you a 0, which is permitted, right? So, option b is the right option. These are three values which we checked just now. So, that gives you that, that actually the value of x should be between minus 3 and 3, and it could be 3 also, since uh, square root of 0 is 0, right? That is valid. And in this interval, we get that x is less than minus 5 or x is greater than 5, right? So, we get these two options from that interval. And that gives us option B as the right solution, correct? So, note, there's a minor correction here. We have to include plus and minus 3 as that will lead to 0 and square root of 0 is valid, right? So, anyway, I hope with this example, you understand how to find domain of composite functions with absolute functions within them. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.